Back at the Abu Dhabi tour in February, Matt noticed that some of the pros' positions were getting even more extreme. Stems were slammed, and in some cases, they even had the nose of the saddle tilted ever so slightly downwards. Yeah, and after some really high-level investigation, I found out that it was because the UCI had relaxed the rule on how far the nose of the saddle could be pointing downwards. So the old rule was three degrees, but now the pros could tilt it downwards nine degrees, allowing them to get into a far more aero position. We've just got our fingers on the pulse. Yeah, we have. Uh, but would that position work for everybody? Well, guess what? We have got some stems to slam. We have. We're going to put them on our bikes and find out firstly, if we can actually ride in that position, and secondly, if it's faster for us. Time to slam some stems and get into some kit. How low can we go? Now, there aren't many flat roads here in Alta Badia. In fact, we can't find any. But what we have found is a 2.1 kilometer stretch of road that is ever so slightly downhill. This is to allow us to do the sort of speeds that the pros do, even though we can't match their power output. We're gonna do three runs each, trying to average 330 watts. We're both going to start with our normal setups. Mine being a 12 centimeter negative six degree stem with a 10 mil spacer whilst Dan uses his standard setup of a 12 centimetre negative six degree stem, and both of our saddles will be horizontal. All right, first run done, 2.1 Ks, two minutes 28, average power 332. Okay, the first run with my normal stem setup. Time of 2.36, average power 3.26. So here is my bike with a slam stem, and doesn't it look pro? Except for the extra bits of headset space on the top, but we'll ignore that. And check out my bike. Not only do I have a negative stem, along my position at the front, but in addition, my saddle has been tilted downwards to the maximum UCI limit of nine degrees two. Now, that's our standard runs done. Let's get slammed. Well, that was my first slammed run. Gonna do two of those, but I was three seconds quicker by average one watt more, so not much in it, although, my back's a bit sore now, and I felt like I was recruiting different muscles. But it certainly felt aero, but the results, well, there's not much in it, marginally faster. Results time. Yeah, uh, we've just been talking through them, so they're not a surprise to us. But Matt, you saved on average 5%. Uh, your power, however, was ever so slightly higher for the slammed section, only by a couple of watts, but that might have played a small part in the time savings. Uh, for me, I saved on average nine seconds, and that is despite quite a big anomaly. So the first time I did the slammed run, my time was actually very similar to those on my normal setup. However, after that, I took, averaged about 11 seconds faster. So overall, a nine second difference. That gave me a percentage difference of 6%, which is actually quite a bit, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it just shows, I mean, I think it's definitely something to take into consideration. I mean, I think what you have to look at is how it actually felt. I mean, and we need to mention as well, I actually slammed or tilted my saddle down as well to the maximum nine degrees allowed now by the UCI. So I had a very different position than the one that I'm used to, but I did feel very low, did feel very aero. I rode on the drops for all six of my runs. Uh, but the one caveat for me was when I finished my first run slammed, I had quite a sore lower back that thankfully it's gone now, 
But uh, yeah, definitely a bit of a twinge. Uh, so I think if you are going to look at slamming your stem, you need to do it slowly and incrementally. Yeah, well, a couple of points from my point of view. Firstly, I wonder whether I did try to be more aero when I had a slam stem because I'm thinking, well, I'm really low at the front, I'm going to take advantage of this and perhaps I could get myself slightly more aero in my normal position. I also think my slam stem there is probably quite a similar position to what I had as a professional rider. Uh, now, before we started this video, I did think that on my normal setup now, when I've got my arms at 90 degrees that I was super aero, but looking back at some of the footage and perhaps not quite as aero as I thought I was, my back wasn't quite as flat as I thought it might be in that normal setup. But yeah, I wasn't as comfortable on those slam setups. It was harder to put out the same amount of power for me personally. And I just can feel it these days in my shoulders and my neck. I'm just not used to being in that position for that long and I don't think I'd be able to sustain it for very long. Well, I spoke to a few of the pros earlier in the year about this position, but what you have to bear in mind is they change positions, I don't know, October, November, and have the whole winter to train and adapt to that position, whereas we had no time at all. We basically slammed, got on, and rode hard for 2Ks. But talking about the distance as well, we only rode for 2Ks, but saw respective savings of 5 and 6%. Can you imagine the advantages for a pro, 5 or 6% over yeah. a 4 or 5 or even 6 hour race? Yeah, certainly going to be a bigger percentage, into, well, not a bigger percentage, but more power, because yeah. uh, they do far more than us, of course. So is it worth it for you at home to slam your stem? Uh, well, we've been chatting about this, and I think the answer is probably no, unless you've got an enormous amount of time to get used to it, and also some time to put aside and actually do some stretching, because it is an extreme position to be in, Bike riding is painful enough, isn't it? Going up climbs, really pushing yourself, feeling the pain in your legs and often other parts of your body. So to add some extra strain onto your neck and your shoulders and all those other bits that hurt when you're really aero, I don't think it's personally worth it. Yeah, and I think a lot of the geometry of frames, the endurance geometry of a lot of bikes these days, if you suddenly slam from riding at a relatively high position at the front, you could actually do yourself some damage. There's no harm at all in trying to adapt to your position to get more aero, but our advice would be, do it slowly over a longer period of time. Yeah, uh, well, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, you can do so now by clicking on the glow, which is somewhere on the screen. And as Matt just said, uh, the biggest thing in terms of aerodynamics is your body, and you can change your body shape on your bike quite easily. Uh, we've got some tips just down here on how to get more aero. And to see the video that led to this video, slammed extreme positions of the pros, click just down here.